Hello everyone, this is Rich Davis. I hope you're all doing well. I am doing the post-Easter devotional number five. Uh, five ways to live out the resurrection. My assignment number five is living a life of hope. So the Bible verse I'm going to use is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. And I'm going to read that as as it comes up in the middle of the devotional. This is not my devotional. This is not my work. I'm actually going to use someone else's work. This is a friend of mine in Kenya. His name is Will Copeland. He's a missionary in Kenya. He's a missionary neurosurgeon. And he just at the same time that uh, they asked for uh, this devotional, he sent out uh, his, uh, this, his email update. And it was basically the same thing. I thought this would be really great for living a life of hope. Uh, so who knew that neurosurgeons had such uh, theological depth to them. Certainly not me. Anyway, like I said, his name is Will Copeland. He's a missionary in Kenya, and if you want to know more about him, if you want to follow him, receive his updates, uh, let me know, and I can put you in touch. So here goes. Here's what he says. You know the statistics. You know what it's doing to the world. Perhaps you know most keenly because you know what it's doing to you. It's threatening so many of the foundations of your life, your job, your retirement account, your social network, and reminding each of us that the day will come when we won't ever work again, when we won't have a penny to our name, when our social calendars will forever be empty. COVID-19 reminds us of death. C.S. Lewis's words on war seem as pertinent in a time like this. Here's C.S. Lewis's words. What does war, or the coronavirus, do to death? It certainly does not make it more frequent. 100% of us die, and that percentage cannot be increased. It can put death, several deaths earlier, but I hardly suppose that is what we fear. Yet war does do something to death. It forces us to remember it. War makes death real to us. That's from learning in wartime. Each of us who has known life has known the fear of death. And yet in Jesus Christ, the fear of death is turned on its head. Consider the words of the biblical writer Paul. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live on in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. That's from the well-known passage, Philippians 1, 21-23. Times like this test whether we can say the same. It can be easier to say to live as Christ and to die as gain when life costs us little and death seems far off. It is another thing to say the same when disease is spreading and we or someone we love might die. Is death really good news for those who love Jesus? Is life after death really better, by far, than even the best this life has, has to offer? With Jesus, death becomes a servant, a door into his all-satisfying presence forever. Death is gain, not because the experience of death is any less likely or any less painful, but because of what death gives us, because of who death gives us. <clears throat> I've, found, I've found myself lately cherishing anew the words of the Apostle Peter. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. That's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. In this time of uncertainty, when you're tempted to fear or despair, may you find rest in the assuredness of our living hope, Jesus Christ. Or perhaps during this Easter week, you would come to know that hope for the first time. And then something else that I found as I was reviewing this a little more, uh, uh, DesiringGod.org has an article by David Mathis uh, that's very similar, and he adds this one thought. The Spanish flu pandemic that battered America in 1918, as conditions worsened, health care workers in city after city pleaded for volunteers to care for the sick. Few stepped forward. In Philadelphia, the head of emergency aid pleaded for help in taking care of sick children. Nobody answered. If such times are ahead, Christians freed from the fear of death could be the first to step forward. Will we answer if that call comes? If clinics and hospitals filled and overflowing cannot care for everyone? I really love that last part because it's uh, sort of been one of my themes in life that this gift we've been given uh, uh, as Christians is that, um, this is me talking now, 
uh, just to, just my concluding thoughts. This gift we've been given as Christians is uh, that this life is not the end, and uh, what's beyond life is far greater than what we're experiencing here, that uh, God has the final say, and that um, there is a conclusion to, to all this we're going through. Uh, if we really believe that's true, if we really uh, live as though that was true, then uh, we it's not intended for us to just go home and, and, and keep for ourselves. It's intended for us to share, and it should sort of inform everything we do. So in this time, as everybody else is kind of freaking out and living in fear over what could be, uh, this is a good time for us as Christians to step forward and care for the people that aren't getting cared for otherwise, and living as though really uh, death is not the end and as though we're not afraid of what's beyond death. So um, thank you very much. I hope you're all doing well, uh, and I hope the, the time comes soon when we can all be together again for real and not just virtually like this. In the meantime, uh, stay safe and God bless. Thank you very much. God, how beautiful your holy word that formed the worlds in such goodness. Oh, the shame that we would spurn it all to turn and fall into darkness. God, we'll sing how through your Son you turned this loss and hurt into glory. How, when scorned and death you Thank you.